All right, folks, so 3v3 is back in uh, Grand Arena Championships. And uh, and I know a lot of folks uh, have differing opinions about this, but for me personally, I love 3v3. I think it's my favorite format uh, for Grand Arena. <clears throat> the reason I love it is it really suits my style of playing. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I like to go defense heavy. I like my defense to get holes. Uh, and I like to have multiple attempts on my opponent's teams as well because I like to try different things out. And uh, I like to explore the depths of my roster. And all of these things I can do uh, more easily in a 3v3 setting where efficiency is less important as opposed to a 5v5 setting. Plus, uh, you know, I get to face very unique teams um, and not just get to set unique teams on defense, but I get to face these unique teams because my opponents tend to get really creative in, uh, in 3v3 settings. Um, in 5v5, I tend to face the same teams over and over again. There are very few opponents, maybe 10 to 15 percent of the opponents I face really go for something different that I haven't seen before, but it tends to get boring after a while. And uh, that's why I feel the need to come up with themes when I come up when I face a, an opponent in 5v5. But in 3v3, there's tons of creativity. Almost every single match, I see something different. So, so things might get tricky with Galactic Legends in the mix. I will acknowledge that. But uh, but I think we as a community will figure stuff out uh, within after the first week. We will have a solution to uh, to chip away at the Galactic Legends that we see on defense. Uh, Ray is going to be tougher than Kylo, but um, but we'll figure it out. I'm sure. Um, so just to talk a little bit about the scope of this video, um, it's going to be a relatively long video, but I just wanted to give my thoughts on uh, on my approach to three v three, how three v three is different from five v five, what you should be thinking about when you think about offense or defense and the scope of this video is basically going to be just to teach you how to fish i'm not going to actually give the uh, specific teams or or um, uh, or counters that i'm that i'm going to be using um, that would obviously depend from from, uh, from on what i face on on defense but uh, for for uh, specific counters and specific gameplay I would suggest that you go to uh, my buddy Zarat's video. He put out a video recently which uh, gave a few really good resources on uh, on Grand Arena counters. I'll leave the link down below in the uh, video, so feel free to go and check that out. Um, over a year, him and Sil Solo Base 15 have been collecting uh, uh, really good counters and videos of this, so everything has been indexed and, and properly laid out in a spreadsheet. Very good resource. Go and check that out. Um, you won't be disappointed. All right, so let's uh, let's go into this uh, this particular video what i want to do is talk about uh, my golden rules that i have for uh, approach to grand arena 3v3 so here's how i think about it um, very first thing that as i mentioned before you know forget about efficiency um, and focus on one shots because in uh, 3v3 as opposed to 5v5 where all we can assume that your opponent is going to one shot everything so you need to in order to get better than, than your opponent, you need to be able to focus on uh, banner recovery and ending with the all three um, characters in there. It's not going to be as important, like those one or two banners here and there. People are going to be not uh, end, ending up not clearing zones or not clearing uh, or teams on their first attempts. So as long as you focus on one shots, don't sweat the small things like, uh, like ending with full banners and all that. That's not going to be worth it. Secondly, Having said that, you know, focusing on one shots, there are cases where, uh, especially if you've set a tough defense, where uh, you might need to take multiple attempts against a particularly tough defense that your opponent has set. It could be a GL or a meta team like Gas or Darth Revan or something like that. So in those cases, in a 3v3 setting, preloading is a valid strategy. You could go in and prime the team, reduce their cooldowns, um, go in and then um, and, and then uh, in the second attempt, uh, take a real team in, like first attempt go in with a level one character or something like that, throw them at the team. Uh, second attempt go in with the, with your real team and then get uh, get the get the victory down. And if you're able to in your, in your first attempt, if you, if you think you're heading in a direction where you're not able to get the uh, victory, at least try to take the leader down because um, then the leadership bonus does not carry over to the second battle and then you can go in and clean it. So these kind of uh, follow-up battles are really not as common in 5v5. Um, I find that it's a valid strategy in 3v3. So definitely uh, feel free to utilize that. And then the other thing that I really want to talk about is, uh, as opposed to 5v5, where, where you typically go in with five of the same faction and there's tremendous amounts of faction synergy, in a 3v3 setting, 
Action synergy is not as important. Kit synergy is extremely important. You'll frequently find characters uh, from different factions, different uh, uh, or uh, you know dark side light side alignment being paired up together just because they have kit synergy so you need to be able to really know the kits and know how they interact with the uh, with other uh, characters and be able to mix and match appropriately to uh, to really come up with effective defense and offense so that i think kit synergy is really really important and let me talk a little bit about uh, give a few examples and talk about what uh, what works in 3v3 and uh, what's uh, what's worse off so let's uh, let's take a look at that so what's weaker in 3v3 is uh, full faction synergies now um, we've been playing grand arena 5v5 for the last four or five months and uh, you know um, anytime uh, we see a weak uh, bounty hunter team or we see a uh, you know um, l3 team or kira team we take uh, we all these b teams can very easily be countered by by troopers for example or geos and all these characters uh, evokes troopers sisters geos they rely on full faction synergy you typically go in with all five of the same faction and this tremendous amount of support that these guys give to each other that's not going to uh, since you're in 3v3 when you take away uh, 40 percent of the team the effect that these guys have is going to be much reduced so these teams specifically are uh, are uh, end up being losers in um, in 3v3 uh, now some of these characters can be utilized in in other areas the sisters for example make really great uh, defensive teams just because of the presence of zombie and because their their uh, kits are so versatile especially if you have them relicked up they make great defensive teams and gba just because uh, He's got, uh, you know, it, it's basically two characters for the price of one. His importance really increases in 3v3 in a certain way because uh, you're basically getting uh, getting a four versus three match in uh, with the GBA in there. So, but, uh, you know, uh, Geos, uh, I would recommend keeping them on offense as opposed to defense because on defense, a full set of five Geos can be taken out very easily by, by just Treya and Sion. So in a 3v3 setting, uh, when you have two less characters, Treya and Sion counter becomes all the more easier. So I would prefer keeping them on offense and using them in a, in a 4v3 situation to really take out a, a tough team uh, or a tanky timeout team, for example. So that's uh, that's basically uh, where I would see, you know, overall I would see full faction synergies like these really uh, become weaker in 3v3. In addition, there are full faction bonuses that really, uh, you know, we take advantage of in a in a... 5v5 setting which definitely become weaker in a 3v3 setting some of them could be like bounty hunters like in a five when you've got five bounty hunters it's easier to get a contract off in a 3v3 setting more, much more difficult to get a contract off so bounty hunters in my opinion are less favorable to be used on defense it's definitely more favorable to be used on offense especially because a ton of them can go around uh, 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 taunt and it's easy to control getting the contract when uh, when you use them on offense EP turn meter train. So when you've got five characters, A, your Vader is going to be less speedy because he's got less Sith and Empire to give him that speed bonus and less uh, opposing Rebel and Jedi to give him the speed bonus. So you won't get to go off as early as, as before. Plus you end up using characters like Thrawn and Basti in other teams in a 3v3 setting, not necessarily under EP. So uh, EP team becomes ends up being that much less effective. And we, if typically you've got five characters driving the turn meter train here, you'll only end up having... Uh, three characters so ep's usage also is uh, in my opinion a little less in a 3v3 setting um, and then you've got uh, stat pumps that that jenna knight revan and gas gives based on the presence of five characters like extra offense and speed based based on five jedi or five five first characters in there now that's only going to be three five first and jedi characters so their effectiveness is slightly reduced but still they're very effective on on offense in, in any case jkr and gas teams uh, other examples are the GG uh, BB-8 nuke team where it relies on the speed of five, uh, it requires five droids to basically reduce 8% uh, to increase 8% turn meter every time at the beginning of battle. That of, uh, obviously is going to be way less effective. Um, and then uh, SLKR, uh, um, Galactic Legend uh, Kylo Ren, is going to uh, take uh, much more time to reach their ultimate just because you've got lesser characters doing damage. To lesser amount of characters so those are some areas where uh, characters are weaker in 3v3 as opposed to 5v5 and where you really have strength in 3v3 and what you really should be looking to utilize in terms of synergy is uh, 
you have these tons of duo synergies in in the game like you've got um, Han and Chewie very strong offensive team where and all these characters that I've mentioned over here this is just a no it's not meant to be an exhaustive list it's just a an illustrated list of of uh, places where the kits have um, they have basically named the other character in the kits and the kits are very closely synergized with each other like Han and Chewie Padme and Anakin BB-8 and uh, and uh, JTR and tons of others the resistance heroes the vets um, and Mission and Zalbar, all of these in, in a 3v3 setting, they become so much more important because the synergy is really amplified uh, when 66% when of the characters in the team have the same synergy. Um, so all these guys, I usually keep, t- tend to keep them together, whether on, on defense or offense. Um, there are a few exceptions. The last two over here, uh, even though uh, Echo and Fives and Magna Guard and GG have got uh, kit synergy written in their kits, uh, but uh, I typically tend to use them uh, with other teams like fives. I typically tend to use with Rex. Uh, General Grievous I tend to use with B1 and B2. Um, so it's um, it it depends from from uh, from kit to kit. But uh, for most of the kits which have duo synergies, um, I typically tend to uh, to keep them together. I obviously didn't mention a lot of them in here. This is just meant to be illustrative. There's Biggs and uh, and Veg. There's Chirrut and Bays and, and tons of other characters like that which have. Uh, Cassian and, and uh, K2, which a lot of characters which have uh, kit synergy built in, but uh, but I think these are the, the the good ones that I could think of. So that's the duo synergies. There are some excellent trio synergies as well, which in my opinion, you must have them on defense. They're like, and these synergies really make them, make it very difficult for, uh, for me to break up these characters in a 3v3 setting. So it's Treya, Sion, Nihilus, amazing in 3v3. I usually like to keep them on offense, but if you're able to, if you can afford to keep them on defense, they're a really tough team to take out as well. You need to take in something uh, really uh, heavy uh, against them. Uh, Darth Revan is something which I highly recommend you keep on defense. On all my 3v3 settings, I've kept uh, Darth Revan, Malak, and Basti together on, on defense. And in my opinion, it's a tougher team to take out than Gas, 501st. Um, it still holds the, uh, the, the the trio synergy that these guys have. It still uh, is an extremely tough thing to to counter. And you can very easily find people stonewalled on just these three characters. And that's the reason, uh, usually in my 5v5 setting, I keep Basti with my EP team. And I sometimes tend to break up the Sith Empire team. But in this case, these three are uh, have excellent synergy and, and have to be kept together, preferably on defense. So those are some duo and trio synergies that you have. But like I mentioned, kit synergies. You should also look at what other characters uh, have synergies which are no long, no not necessarily tied to faction or uh, you know or, or anything like that, but but tied to the kit. And some examples of that could be you know like Watt and Han. These guys are very often seen together uh, in a five v five setting. Now their synergy is um, obviously amazing, and even in a three v three setting, um, I typically tend to use Watt and Han together on on offense. You give the uh, taunting tech to to Han, he becomes invincible and he becomes a, a permanent taunt. And then you get another uh, character in there, uh, preferably uh, an attacker with uh, with AOE. Give that uh, give the weapons tech to him, and uh, and that's it. You'll be doing uh, tremendous amounts of damage, and you can you can uh, clear teams uh, you know with no problem at all. Typically, I like to bring in Wampa as the third, and they can take care of uh, almost any team, uh, no problem at all. Um, Acolyte uh, Nest, that's another popular combo where you take um, a character which goes into stealth like Acolyte or Dengar or Leia and then you take in um, Nest over there to act as a tank and uh, and force people to attack Nest and, um, and and counter. And at the same time, you've got the, the second character at the back uh, sniping uh, your, uh, your, uh, your, your characters out of stealth. So those kind of teams are also pretty uh, pretty uh, common and that's another example of where you have kit synergy between a stealth character and a character which is left out in the open like Nest or or, or a tanky Kylo Ren or uh, or Wampa or somebody like that. So that's another example of kit synergy. And then you've got uh, you know Wampa and Hermit Yoda, another great example where one goes into stealth and gives uh, really good stats and benefits and assists calls to the other who is a great attacker. Um, so another good example of uh, of kit synergy. There's tons more out there. There's there's lots of creativity out there, 
and uh, and people really uh, you know you get to see a lot of interesting stuff over here these three examples that i mentioned all these three are light side dark side examples so that's really interesting to see but there's tons more out there which uh, which is really interesting and you can also mix and match the duo synergies that you have with the with a third character which actually ends up getting really good synergy with the duos like an example would be uh, you know han and chewy uh, the great thing about that duo is the third character that you add in over there ends up getting a uh, uh, guard from Chewie. So if you take in a really heavy tank or attacker like say Bosk, imagine Bosk with crit immunity and guard and a permanent tank, a permanent taunting. Uh, have that with the with a with a Han and Chewie in the background, and you'll end up sniping people uh, left, right, and center. Really tough teams can be taken out with that. So really, uh, really good uh, options that you have when you when you do mix and matching between duos and. Uh, and other other characters which have uh, get synergy. Another example could be uh, Vader. He's taken in pretty often with uh, with Mission and Zalba just because of the dot synergy. Uh, you can take in um, JTR or uh, um, or uh, Ray with your Resistance heroes. They are they are uh, really well together. You can take in Finn or Poe with your uh, veteran Hans. Um, you can take in um, um, really anyone with Padme and Anakin basically GK or C3PO there's there's tons of options out there so that's that's uh, that's the creativity that you get with the with the 3v3s so that's uh, that's the third point that I talked about which is uh, faction synergy not as important but kit synergy is uh, extremely important now the next point I want to bring up is uh, don't be afraid to go leaderless now in a, you, you have a certain amount of leaders. Um, you've got tons of leaders in the game, but not all of them are really good. And you don't want to uh, force yourself to go in with a, with a weaker character just because they are a leader. Um, you really want to be able to use the three best characters that you have. So there are tons of cases where you might just want to go in on offense or defense without a, a character which has a leadership ability. Uh, some examples could be, you know, if you're using your Kira elsewhere with Nest or whatever, L3 and all that, and you have your scoundrels left over and you want to use them together. On offense, I really like to use uh, uh, the young Han and young Solo along with the uh, Vandor Chewie. Uh, a lot of the uniques act as leadership abilities like the reduction in damage, the ability to re revive and, uh, and protection recovery. So a lot of the Vandor's uniques acts as sort of a, a, a proxy leadership ability. Um, and there's tons of synergy between these three. You can uh, give prepared over to Vandor, hide him, make sure that he's always prepared so that these characters get revived. You have escalating damage out there. You've got cleanses. So these three characters really uh, benefit each other really well. You, you don't really need a leadership for these three to excel on offense. Uh, another case could be uh, the Wet Han. So if you've already used up your uh, leaders in resistance like Ray or JTR or Finn, who are the three best leaders out there, and you still have the Wet Hans uh, and the Wet Chewies uh, available to use, the Wets available to use, you can, uh, the, part of that kit is if the uh, the resistance ally and the leader slot takes damage, then uh, they get tons of bonus offense and crit chance and crit damage, damage and all that good stuff. So you can put in any resistance character as a leadership ability and have these guys ramp up their damage and, and end up doing damage, especially if they're relicked up. So in this case, uh, since neither of the vets are, are tanks or taunters, if I put in a holder, for example, who doesn't have a leadership ability, but who will tank and take the hits in from the enemy, that will really supercharge the vets and be able to, and they'll be able to get decent damage done. This I think will work on defense as well as offense, um, but I think uh, it, it'll be a pretty good defensive team in my opinion. And then you've got a couple of cases uh, that I've kept below where, uh, you know, I've used some of these in the past. Um, usually I like to keep Malak with, with a full uh, Darth Revan, Basti, uh, Sith Empire team, but you can keep Malak lead as well. Uh, Malik lead with Basti, what it mean, ends up happening is uh, Basti gives the the leader six, extra defense and and uh, tenacity and all that good stuff and potency also I think and uh, ends up uh, giving them foresight and um, and uh, just making them little little harder to kill. Um, there's also a lot of shock synergy between Sith Assassin and and um, and uh, Basti and with Malik, so that uh, can make Malik extra tanky. Um, extra difficult to take out just because uh, you've got him in the lead and uh, and Basti's unique gives all the, the benefits to a Sith Empire uh, lead. Um, 
then you've got uh, Malik with the you know Mission and Zalba. That's another example of Malik not having a lead ability but working really well with Mission and Zalba because every time Malik takes damage, uh, Zalba ends up taunting and then Mission ends up attacking, and then uh, Malik very soon can get back to full health and full protection or full health rather. And uh, again, when he takes damage, not only do the enemies get feared, but Zalba ends up getting taunt and retribution, and Mission ends up assisting and uh, and doing damage. So those are some examples of. Uh, uh, teams which really work well uh, even if you don't have a, a person with a leadership ability in the team. So don't be afraid to experiment and go leaderless in a, in a 3v3 setting. All right, next uh, what I want to talk about is uh, what you what how we should be thinking about what kind of characters to take in on offense and what kind of characters to take in on defense. And there are certain categories or certain things that I like to think of when I like to think of um, uh, what to take for offense. So you want characters who can really control the board really well because in a 3v3 setting, controlling uh, your opponent becomes all the more important. I would say even more important than uh, than actual raw damage. Uh, you need characters who can ignore taunt. You need characters who can uh, who can really solo very well on their own. High damage characters which can really do a good job of clearing out B teams on their own. You need dispellers, extremely important because you're going to have taunters and people with stealth. You're gonna uh, you're gonna face a lot of timeout teams, so you need anti uh, you need people who can go in and uh, and really take care of uh, you know uh, really heavy timeout teams like snipers, and you need uh, people who can go in and clean up teams who can go in and who are good for cleanup because you will be left with a lot of uh, uh, second and third battle attempts. Uh, let's uh, let's go in a little deeper into those and deep dive into what I mean exactly in, in for each of those categories. So for offense, when I look at control characters. What are the characters who can really control very well? Thrawn. Now his fracture, Thrawn I would say is probably the single most important character that you should save on offense. All the other characters that I'll talk about can go on defense and they are flexible, but Thrawn is probably the most important character to keep on offense for Grand Arena, uh, both in 3v3 as well as 5v5. The fracture is the most important debuff out there. It's been used in every single counter for everything that, that we have seen so far. Uh, it really neutralizes the characters. So definitely keep Thrawn on offense. Um, you know, no negotiation, no discussion. Um, other characters who can really control um, uh, well on offense, uh, Treya with the Isolate, that's another great debuff where um, um, you can completely uh, get rid of the uh, the tank, uh, completely neutralize the tank. It prevents, uh, you know, all positive effects, turn meter gain, counters, all of that good stuff. Freya is great on offense as well. Uh, Dooku. Dooku is great for uh, just because uh, his uh, counters apply ability block and stun. He's a great count a person to have on offense. His importance, I would say, is really ramped up all the way up in a 3v3 setting just because uh, uh, just because of the utility that, that Dooku brings out there. He can go into stealth and hit under health. Uh, all great characteristics to have for uh, in a 3v3 setting. And the other character great for control is Thro is a uh, crew. Now crew comes with a two turn unavoidable, unevadable, unresistible uh, uh, stun, which is really great for controlling the board in the three v three setting. You are basically getting one character, uh, thirty three percent of the team out of commission within the first uh, uh, within the first uh, few seconds of the battle. And uh, that really allows you to, to make it a 3v2 match right at the beginning of the of the game. And if you have a fast Hux in there, uh, which is who is slightly slower than crew, then what ends up happening is you your crew goes first if your crew is also fast. Your crew goes first, stuns one character, your Hux goes next with advantage, he passes the turn meter back to crew, and your crew ends up um, having full uh, uh, turn meter again. Uh, and no cooldowns again and then ends up uh, stunning a second character on the team so you have at the very beginning of the board if you have a fast crew and and hux two of the three enemy characters get stunned right off the board uh, within the first 10 15 seconds and you've got complete control of the battle and your third character who could be a damage dealer like fox or or uh, sith uh, empire uh, sith trooper those guys can then go in and, and get the damage done so a really, uh, really effective team for control. So those kind of characters are really effective to use on offense. I never keep these characters on defense. Uh, always tend to keep them on offense. And then, uh, like I mentioned, ignoring taunt is a very important uh, capability to have in your uh, offensive team. 
uh, your your typically the kind of defensive teams that you see are are having one a really good auto taunter or a pre taunter or uh, you know someone uh, with the prevalence of what these days you have a uh, permanent taunters like that so having characters like b- the bounty hunters with uh, you know jango or boba or the mandalorian who can go around taunt um, that's really a, a really beneficial thing to have you have uh, you know permanent taunters like zombie for example which uh, bounty hunters really do well against on uh, on offense so i always uh, uh, keep my bounty hunters on offense uh just to be able to take out some of those uh, uh teams which uh, with those troublesome taunts um and then you have uh, jkr who can also go around taunt and not just go around taunt but mark a character around taunt and enable your other characters in the team to attack that uh, that particular team uh, jkr i typically save for grievous but uh, grievous is not as threatening in a, in a 3v3 setting um but uh, but jkr is a even with galactic legends i would say jkr is a, is a, is is probably going to be a very important part of the counter uh cls is another great uh, character who can go around taunt and not only can he go around taunt but he can also apply buff immunity on the taunt which is uh, again another great debuff to have on in grand arena 3v3 offense all your characters who can apply buff immunity can essentially neutralize the taunt uh just as effectively as a fracture or isolate um until the cleanse comes around obviously but uh, but at least temporarily you can get around it with the, with buff immunity and then uh, and then bypass the taunt so so these are characters who are really great uh for offense again and then there are other characters who are really really well suited for offense uh, just because they are heavy hitters they can um, they can uh, very well solo teams which are uh, which are uh, um you know b grade or i would say a minus type of teams um you obviously have wampa who can um, solo uh, rebels teams very easily but also lower level teams like evox or or anything else any other b grade teams that you see out there uh, aoe days is great as well if you've got uh, if you're going for for uh, slkr and you've got a highly relict uh, kylo uh, that guy is great on uh, on offense as well as long as you don't have anything with days you're not facing anything with days or stun uh, uh kylo uh, has got his own protection recovery he's got a retribution on him that means he can counter just like wampa um and uh, and do a great job in um, in uh, in taking out uh, big level teams duku i mentioned as well if you got relic duku especially with zeta which allows him to recover his own protection again another character who can counter and those kind of ca- characters who can counter are really great in a in a solo setting sion as well uh, weaker teams i would say sion can uh, can uh, uh, solo on his own um, but uh, you know combine him with a couple of other characters to give him some support and he's great on offense um, cls again uh, great great character to have on offense if you combine him with c3po um and maybe one other level rebel like leia maybe who who can go under stealth uh, because uh, cls can recover his own protection and health that makes him a great character to be out in the open while there are other support characters who can uh, basically uh, uh, give him a, a damage boost on the background uh, there are other characters who are also great to solo but i prefer to keep them on defense and i think that they do better on defense which is why i really leave them there malak and nest obviously everyone knows can do really well on uh, on offense they can solo many teams but i prefer keeping them on defense just because they are that much tougher to take out on defense the uh, malak ness gas and uh, general grievous those are all characters who can uh, solo many teams just because they've got uh, really great kits but uh, they are also four characters who are really tough to take out on defense now if if you're left uh, uh, they're really tough characters to clean up like if you're left with only these guys on defense you have to take in something heavy or specific teams to clean them up it ends up wasting a fracture or an isolate or a or a dark nihilus or or uh, you know so it it takes specific teams to or specific characters to clean these guys up which is why i prefer to have them on defense as opposed to offense wh- where they're also great um because of all these taunts which are all there and all the the prevalence of stealth which is out there in uh, in uh, in in uh, defensive teams you need characters who are able to dispel effectively and uh, i like to keep a uh, tons of characters in offense who can do that dispel um, obviously the best dispel out there is uh, is going to be your asaj and ipd uh, just because they can dispel they can mass dispel without really uh, 
a need to do damage to the to the characters because tons of things can happen when you do damage. Uh, people can start taunting, um, and you know people can start getting turn meter and all of that stuff. So if you're able to dispel without getting damage done, like Asajj and IPD, that's uh, that's like a, an A level dispel in my opinion. Asajj I like to keep for defense. Uh, just because she's a great lead with zombie and and one other character, but uh, IPD I always keep on offense, not just for the for the stealth dispel, but also as an em emergency cleanup uh, crew, uh, because he can uh, he can snipe uh, uh, you know tough cleanup uh, characters. Other characters over here that I mentioned, all of them can dispel uh, you know dead trooper scion, um, echo and T three M four have got AOE dispels. The other characters in the second section over here, uh, you know you've got. Uh, uh, Snips and Plo and Paplu and Darth Nihilus and uh, and uh, Sunfak who can dispel on their basic, which is very uh, good to have as well. Uh, not only for dispelling tanks with their taunt, but also uh, you know characters like Droidica, which you see quite a lot on defense. Having a, a character, I li like to say these kind of characters who can dispel on their basic, just so that uh, you know if you face a tough Droidica team and you're not able to clean clean them up in the first shot. With your regular team, you can always take in one of these characters like Paplu or Sunfak or 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 Plo, uh, some B level characters who can display dispel on their basic. Uh, they're really great against these uh, these stray Droidica teams. And then uh, obviously Nest uh, can also Nest and Shakti also can dispel on their basic, but I like to keep them on defense. Uh, Kira has got another great uh, uh, mass dispel as well. Um, not just like when she's prepared, she she dispels the whole team. But if she's not prepared, she just dispels a target character. But I prefer to keep her on defense along with Nest. So um, um, that's another character to consider. Um, and then uh, since you'll be facing so many timeout teams, you need uh, you need to have enough control, enough characters in your uh, offensive roster to be able to snipe or one shot these uh, these defensive teams, um, the timeout teams. And for that, you've got four characters who are. Uh, amazing at uh, at one shots. You know, you've got you've got uh, Nihilus, you've got IPD Savage who can um, snipe a character for 100k if they're below 50% health, and now you've got Mandalorian as well. These four characters, I would prefer to keep them on offense, um, just so that uh, you know you can take care of these troublesome uh, uh, timeout teams or or really tanky characters which need to be taken out. Uh, Rex also is another character who can annihilate. But I prefer to keep Rex on defense because he's just more problematic there. Just because of the speed bump that he gives up and uh, and that and that uh, annihilate ability, especially if he's behind another tank like Fives with that he has synergy with, uh, Rex is a great character on defense. But the other four that I mentioned over here, the Darth Nihilus, Mandalorian, um, Savage, and IPD, they're great to have in your offensive roster uh, just to take care of some of those uh, um, stubborn tanky characters uh, to snipe them. Um, and then other ti anti timeout teams would be uh, teams like characters like uh, Van Vader lead. Vader lead actually really comes into prominence in three v three more than five v five, just because you can take them, take Vader in with the uh, with say Wampa or uh, or Mission Zalbar or Sidious or uh, Karth or Candrus, and uh, just start applying dots uh, nonstop. And uh, ultimately, because these timeout teams they're typically low damage teams, uh, they won't be able to to uh, really get your uh, your own teams down uh, because they lack damage like there might be teams like uh, Paris and uh, Jolie or uh, or General Kenobi or other characters like that who really heal a lot and uh, revive a lot so when you take in a character like uh, who who applies uh, dots like Vader or a character like Talzin who applies plague uh, those timeout teams can really be, uh, you know, taken out uh, in a very systematic fashion. It might take th three or four minutes, but uh, but I've really had tons of success with Vader and uh, and uh, Talzin in there. Talzin, I would only take against uh, timeout teams which don't have a heal in there, uh, or tanky teams which typically don't have a heal in there. Talzin is really effective over there. You don't even need to surround her with other sisters. You can just take her with other uh, tanks or other characters like that, which will shield her and uh, just let Plague do the job. And then against uh, timeout teams, another thing which is really, really important is uh, is uh, um, healing immunity. So JTR is obviously the best in this regard with the locked healing immunity, but you also have Sidious who applies healing immunity on, on the basic. And Wampa, if you've got him Zetar, he's got healing, um, AOE healing immunity, which is great as well. Uh, you've got uh, 
Kylo who can apply a uh, healing immunity on basic as well. So tons of characters uh, with healing immunity. Um, I prefer to keep on offense just to take out, take care of these uh, these timeout teams. Um, on defense, uh, and uh, there are other characters who can snipe, uh, who are great for anti timeout teams. Like you know, you've got uh, Nest, which is great against those uh, Bastilla, Jedi Bastilla uh, timeout teams. Um, but I prefer to keep Nest on defense, like I mentioned. And then you've got uh, Droidica again with the damage immunity and especially if you've got timeout teams where the opponent takes tons of uh, turns Droidica is uh, you know is going to go in and, and be able to one shot the, that particular team pretty well so um, so again Droidica, Rex and, and uh, uh, Nest I prefer to keep on defense but if you are uh, someone who prefers them on offense they can be really great against uh, timeout teams as well um, and then, um, like I mentioned, cleanup. You 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 want to probably uh, have you, you'll probably end up having multiple battles in a three v three setting. So when you want to go in and clean up, I find a certain set of characters are really very effective in cleanup. You've got Dooku that I've already talked about. Um, he can stun the character while the your surrounding characters, support characters, and go in and take care of them. So I typically like to take in Dooku as my uh, Dooku is my go to cleanup squad against uh, General uh, uh, Skywalker. Uh, you know, because he's Galactic Republic, Dooku really does well against him. He stuns him, he ability blocks him. Um, and then uh, and then I also have, uh, you know, either Droidica or Savage or Thrawn in there who can then go in and, uh, and fracture and then take care of him. So Dooku is great for a cleanup. Uh, Jin, who can remove turn meter and stun and ends up taking tons of turn. Jin is great in a cleanup squad as well. I use Jin quite a lot for a, for a general grievous uh, cleanup. Um, and for a for a malak cleanup as well, uh, you've got uh, Nest in there who uh, not Nest Nights of Spirit in there who can do a pretty good job in cleaning up. She gains foresight, um, and she has a huge damage potential, so uh, can take out some of those stubborn cleanups. And she can stun, which is always great for a cleanup as well. You've got uh, Greedo in there as well who can also stun and reduce turn meter. So basically, you're looking for characters who can reduce turn meter, stun in your uh, cleanup squad. You've got characters like R2-D2 or maybe Royal Guard who can uh, stun on their basic, which is again a great uh, option to have when you're looking at uh, cleanup as well. So just some things to keep in mind when uh, when you're looking for, uh, for for what to save on offense. Those are my thoughts on what uh, what kind of characters or what kind of uh, kits are really suited for uh, for offense. Now let's flip this around and talk a little bit about what uh, what kind of teams really work on defense or what kind of uh, characters should you be keeping on defense in a 3v3 setting. Now obviously, uh, you know, you'll end up keep keeping uh, your meta characters on defense, or your meta teams on defense. Those are the ones who are, which are most likely to get a hold and not just get a hold, but probably put a dead stop over there as well. Because if your opponent in a 3v3 setting, if they run out of teams to take out, take out your meta, then that's probably a full stop for them right over there. Um, obviously, pre-taunters and auto-taunters are important, both in 3v3 and in a 5v5 setting. I think uh, it's important for your defensive teams to have uh, pre- or auto-taunters. Um, you've got characters who can go into stealth so that your, your other characters not in stealth can get damage done uh, with counters and all of that. Um, you've got, you need really need characters also who can go before your enemy, so characters who can really go fast or who can... Uh, uh, speed up your team. Those characters are good to have on defense as well. Um, timeout teams are very popular in 3v3 and teams which are uh, characters we can really do a lot of high damage. So let's let's talk a little bit more about each of these categories. So on defense, uh, meta teams. Now obviously you've got, um, in my opinion, there are four, uh, in this day and age, there are four really high, um, um, high damage, high uh, um, efficiency meta teams out there which uh, can really cause a lot of problems on defense and who are, which are great on offense. You've got Gas, uh, Darth Revan uh, and the two galactic legends Rey and uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. These four teams in my opinion are going to be the toughest meta teams to take out just because of the synergy that they have and the, the fact that in a 3v3 setting their power gets amplified and counters become really really tough and all the counters with these four teams really require all five uh, characters to be there because all five have got certain utility so it, it's they're easier to take out in a 5v5 setting uh, as opposed to a 3v3 setting um, so if you face these in your defense um, um, they are going to be tough to take out so i would recommend keeping these characters on defense um, slkr 
in a uh, can be at least as of now uh, as of the recording of this video the the fix to slkr hasn't been implemented yet which is the uh, you know a solo gas or a gas with another uh, fiber first can can quite easily take out an slkr team that hasn't really been fixed yet so i would uh, prefer keeping slkr on offense if you have that because they'll be able to take care of any of these four meta teams um so that is one one team which i would keep still keep on offense um and gas again while gas is great on defense um he's so much more versatile on offense uh, so whether it's in a solo or whether to take out a galactic legend or or a darth revan team because you've got these maliks and rays over there who really need to be have their maximum health reduced and really gas is the only solution to that Uh, only reliable solution to that. So gas is so versatile in the current meta that you really need to keep them on on offense. And a solo gas is no longer as scary to clean up in a in a defensive setting. You can control him with fracture and and with Duku and uh, and there are other ways to to stun him and uh, and 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 clean him up. So not really much of an issue. Um, you can even IPD him or savage him. Um, so um, so I wouldn't uh, so gas is no longer the hard stop on defense that he used to be when he first came out when he was much more power powerful before he got nerfed. So I would save gas and SLKR on offense, and but if you have a uh, Darth Revan or uh, or uh, Ray, I would definitely keep them on defense. Ray with the resistance heroes and Darth Revan with Malik and Basti. Those I think, in my opinion, are the best combos for for defense. Um, so that's uh, that's basically the meta teams. If you have those, set them on defense and uh, and watch your opponent struggle. Uh, and then uh, pre or auto taunting. Now, what do we what do we mean by pre taunting? Pre taunting, I mean by characters which start the uh, battle with a taunt. And there are tons of them out there. Auto taunt, I mean characters which don't necessarily start with taunt, but with but but which gain taunt uh, in an automatic setting within the battle itself. That means they don't have to use an ability to gain a taunt. uh they gain a taunt when um, things happen like for example gk when an ally gets critically hit he ends up getting a taunt um royal guard or zalbar when when people fall below 100% or 50% health allies then they end up taunting those are auto taunters um pre taunters are the best because uh, you know auto taunters can be bypassed through a very fast character a very fast team but pre taunters obviously are the best to have in your team you obviously don't have as many pre taunters so you can't uh, put pre taunters on all your defensive teams but here are some ideas so the the pre taunters that i really uh, like uh, on defense are uh, you know um sit trooper you've got zombie obviously great on uh, on uh, on defense l3 l3 also cleanses and heals so acts as a as a great uh, pre taunter over there um zombie actually is really uh, uh, effective because not only is she a pre taunter she's a permanent taunter um every time she uses an ability she taunts and she can't really be um be killed great to have on 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 the team showed base also are, are fine but i i would say they're secondary pre taunters um they're not really that great but if you're uh, if you don't have anything left and you really do want a pre taunter on the team you can go with those guys magna again is uh, is effective only with general grievous but typically you, re- you tend to run with b1 and b2 with general grievous Uh, GK and Zalbar over here are auto taunters, but again, all of these guys great for uh, for defensive teams. The three taunters, pre taunters, who I like to keep on offense are Gas for all the reasons I mentioned before, uh, GBA. Now, Geo teams, uh, as I mentioned again, they're not that great on defense anymore. If if your opponent has got a decent or semi decent Treya and uh, Nihilus uh, and Sion, they'll they'll be able to take care of your. uh geos easier than they would have in a in a 5v5 setting so i'd prefer to go with my geos in a in a um, in an offensive setting and then um, gba basically does great on on offense over there it gives me a good pre taunt to uh, to go in um and then you've got crew again um, great control on offense with the double turn stun and all that which is just why i prefer to keep the pre taunting crew on uh, on offense um but um, but that's uh, that's basically uh, you know just some examples of pre taunting or auto taunting that you need to have in your defensive teams to to really make them that much tougher uh next uh, so we also have the concept of uh, we've, we've got basti and uh, what in there who can effectively make your characters pre taunt so basti obviously if you've got uh, basti is great on defense you take basti in there with a couple of other jedis one uh, damage dealing jedi and one tank the tank is going to end up getting uh, pre taunt 
um, and your uh, damage dealers will be there to to do uh, you know just snipe people and uh, and get damage done. Um, you uh, uh, and and the other advantage of Basti lead on defense is you you also get a speed bump, um, which is not depending on the number of characters. It's just a flat fifteen percent speed bump to Jedi. So that's uh, that's really great to see as well. So Basti is great to use on defense to uh, to apply preton to a Jedi. And what what is uh, great on on both the defense and offense? Um, you know, um, I typically tend to use him on offense in a three v three setting. Um, well, I think last three v three, I don't know if I remember if I had what or not. But uh, what happens in three v three is uh, you end up giving a taunt, taunting tech first, and then you only have one other tech to give out. The other tech goes to waste because you don't have that many characters unless you bring in someone like a GBA. So you can only put the weapon stack or the med pack tech on this second character. So that's why I don't like to keep it on defense because um, you get the taunt out, but then the second one, you don't know. Um, usually it's the weapon stack which goes out, uh, but you can never tell sometimes what likes to put the med pack as well. And uh, it's it's highly unpredictable. So what Hermit Yoda, uh, there's, there's an uncertainty associated with it, which uh, I really don't like, um, which is why I typically t like to keep... Um, uh, what on offense just because I can control uh, him much better um, but what does give an auto taunt as well which is again great uh, great uh, control to have all right next is stealth now stealth is another interesting one because just like uh, taunter which uh, redirects your opponent's attacks at a certain character stealth also forces your opponent to attack certain characters which can be great to to control your opponent's uh, uh, attacks on your defense um, and uh, I like to have, uh, apart from taunters, I like to have uh, characters who stealth on my defense as well. I think in a 3v3 setting, they can make things quite tricky. And uh, the characters that I've identified uh, over here, uh, they are already pretty popular in 3v3. Acolyte you typically don't see in 5v5 at all, but you see a quite a lot with Daka, Zombie, and a few others in a 3v3 setting. Um, with Zombie, uh, you know, Acolyte can get quite uh, tricky. Um, you've got other characters like Acolyte who go into uh, almost a permanent state of stealth, like uh, like Dengar and uh, and Leia and uh, and Spy as well. Spy is another great character to have in the background, while you have a, a, a tanky countering taunt, like maybe like Nest or Wampa or someone like that out in the open, and then you have one of these stealthy characters in the background. It's a it's a great uh, great way to uh, to to control your opponents. Uh, um, offense. You've all obviously got uh, C3 uh, R2D2, who's an excellent uh, um, defensive option because not only does he stealth characters, and he also boosts up the stats. Um, you've got Maul, who I've recently zetaed um, as a as a good lead option. Maul with Savage and maybe one other character, maybe Nest or uh, or someone else like that, can um, um, can prove to be quite effective. To, uh, to to you know uh, be able to take out a, a surprise team. Now the reason that stealth works is because there are so few characters with uh, with a dispel. Um, you can't expect your offense to have all of those characters which dispel. So stealth. Uh, if you if you have uh, tons of teams where characters can stealth, you basically run out of those key characters that you can take to counter those uh, those things, and you're forced to work around the stealth. That's why stealth really works that uh, that well. Um, I also have Droidica in there. Droidica doesn't really go under stealth, but it falls under the carry of a category of uh, non-targetable. So just like stealth characters can't be targeted, Droidica with a with a damage immunity can't be targeted unless there's a dispel on board. So it's it's uh, it's basically the the same thing. Um, then uh, so that's basically stealth. Those are the characters that I that I really love having on stealth. Speed. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, on defense, I usually like to keep some characters who are fast or who can speed up the team, which uh, which really allows my team to go first before the defensive team, so as uh, before the offensive team. So as 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 much as you can make that happen, that'll make your defensive team that much tougher to get out because um, to take down since uh, you know your team gets out in the front right at the beginning and uh, if they if they take a turn or two before your opponent gets to go then they set the set of the, the pace of the battle and the and and you you get a much better control in defense uh, as opposed to your opponent so some characters that i love keeping on uh, on defense for that is basti 
and uh, Maul. Um, these guys give a turn meter boost right at the beginning to Sith and Jedi. Newt gives a bonus speed as extortion goes around, so it helps to speed up the characters. Shakti and Rex, uh, that's another great example. Shakti speeds up clones, and Rex, on top of the, the speed bump that Shakti gives, can go ahead and uh, uh, get more speed because of Fiverr first. And then Rex ends up going uh, and uh, using his tenacity up, which gives uh, additional uh, bonus 30% turn meter to all your team, and they end up going next as well, which is the reason I really like to keep... Uh, Rex on defense. Uh, both the Night Sister leads, Asaj and Talzin, uh, automatically give, give a 30 speed bump as well, which is uh, again great for defense. And Ray obviously um, gives a 30 speed boost to uh, um, to your uh, characters. Apart from being, you know, uh, at an ungodly speed by herself, like 500 and above, uh, which uh, you know, which sets the tone for the battle. Just uh, you know, she also gives a flat 30 speed. So all these characters are great for defense. There are other characters who give a speed bump, which I prefer keeping on offense. There's uh, there's uh, Django and crew that I've talked about. I prefer keeping them on offense. Uh, JKR gives a speed bump as well, not as much in 3v3 as in 5v5, but still there. BB-8 as well, um, you know, a good, decent amount of speed bump. And I keep my BB-8 at 290 to 300 speed. So with the speed bump, he ends up going faster than uh, than the, the enemy. So that ends up being a, a good way to counter fast teams or teams with the, with pre-taunt. Um, Watt is, again, another character which, uh, if you want to really outspeed your opponent, you can give the weapons tech out instead of the taunting tech. And the weapons tech uh, ends up giving 15 person speed bump uh, or turn meter gain uh, every time that the uh, enemy uh, opponent goes. So that's another way of speeding up your uh, your opponent, your, your, your own teams on offense. Um, there are a few other characters who give flat speed bumps. There's, uh, you know, Tarkin and uh, and Admiral Lagbar. Uh, we're not used as much in 5v5, but in a 3v3 setting, when you're um, to your last dregs and you need a character to speed up your opponents in a pinch, you can you can use those leads. Uh, Hux can do that. He can pass turn meter around Hux and Thrawn both. If you have a really fast Hux and Thrawn, you can pass turn meter to your other characters who are not as speedy and enable them to go fast. Um, and Dooku has that uh, speed up your the Separatist allies as well. If you've got a fast Dooku, then um, you can use your um, your Makashi ab ability and give 15% speed bump to um, or turn meter gain to all your um, your allies, your Separatist allies. So those are just some ways that you can speed up your characters or uh, get other characters to speed up your allies. Um, and uh, you know which ones I like to keep for offense and defense. And then uh, timeout. Now I have talked about timeout teams. Uh, they seem to be extremely popular in a uh, grand arena uh, 3v3 setting. You basically have a bunch of taunts, revivers, healers out there with the... Uh, typically, they tend to be low damage teams, but and they typically tend to be kept at the back. So if you're running low on teams or running short on teams you um, and you face one of these teams, uh, if you don't have enough damage or enough control characters, then these teams can be really tough to take out. They can be quite problematic. Um, you know, you can also add in other characters like Ewok Elder or or other characters which which heal like Hermit Yoda or um, especially under a, 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 a leadership like Basti or GK, which add tons of health and protection. Um, these kind of teams can uh, can get quite tricky. So obviously, the counter for that I spoke about a little before: healing immunity, um, annihilate type of abilities. Fracture, control, isolate, those kind of th things are what work with uh, with timeout teams. Um, and Vader, of course. <clears throat> but uh, when I set my defense, uh, I not only like to keep timeout teams, but I also like to keep at least one high damage character with those uh, uh, timeout kind of characters. And just because um, uh, offense, in my opinion, is the is the best form of defense. So if you if you are able to get your opponents uh, when when they whatever offensive team they take in, if you're able to get those characters down fast by putting a high damage character in your defense, that really works to your benefit. So if you have, for example, I have a relic nest, uh, a relic uh, nest and relic uh, um, spirit. So these guys on defense they hit really really hard, um, and um, in, in in the case of spirit, she can uh, ignore defense. Um, so your opponent is basically you know, whatever team they take in, you've got nest from behind. If, if you've got your nest protected by stealth or uh, or by taunters, and you've got your nest, uh, you know, um, sniping at, at your uh, at your team, 
uh, and stunning them, then uh, that really makes the counter that much more difficult. So Spirit um, that way is a, is a great team, great character to have on defense. Nest again can be left in the open and will end up sniping a team out one by one. Grievous and Malak, these two characters are extremely tough to take out um, on defense. Um, so especially in a 3v3 setting. So those guys are, are good high damage characters to have on your defense to just uh, you know start uh, taking your, your whole team out one by one. Echo is another great character, high damage character, good AoE, um, great to keep on defense uh, just for that reason. Good to keep him with other characters who he has synergy with like Rex or Fives or, or Arc um, or under a Shakti lead which really boosts up his offense. So great uh, great stuff to have on defense. Other high damage characters that I like to keep on offense, um, Han obviously is a, is a great character to, uh, to control the battle right from the beginning. You've got um, um, Wampa, high damage character, um, Gas and General uh, Jedi Knight Anakin, um, good AoEs, very high damage, uh, give tons of um, uh, offense up, critical chance, all that stuff. Um, and I've got Scavenger in there as well, especially for those going for Ray. You've got your Scavenger relic up to R7. She hits really, really hard. A uh, little weak, which is why I prefer to keep her on offense. But uh, if you're able to protect her and if you're able to give her the right buffs, um, and the right opportunity, she can one-shot a character just like that and take, um, it's almost as good as an Annihilate. I've had her hit for 80, 90, 100k just like that. So definitely uh, uh, high damage characters suited for uh, for offense, just some of them. There are, there are plenty of them out there. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but just some examples I'm giving for, uh, for high damage characters that you want to keep on defense and offense. So that's basically you know, what I look for. Those are the main cat characteristics that I look for when uh, I'm trying to set a defense. Um, so that's the uh, overall approach that I have for uh, 3v3, you know, just focus on efficiency, um, try to, um, try to uh, apply cooldown reductions uh, and preloading as a strategy to, to try to get the opponents down because you'll, be, and you, you'll end up going to the depths of your roster. So you'll have to have multiple teams in some cases to try to take your opponent's uh, teams down. Um, focus on kit synergy. Faction is not as important in the 3v3 setting anymore. Um, there's still tons of faction bonuses that you can take advantage of, but focus more on the kit synergy. That's where uh, if you get creative, you can really surprise your opponent. Um, you know, go leaderless, whether it's on your offense or defense. If, you're, if you don't have a really good leader that you want to, that you can place, don't be afraid to go leaderless. And then, um, you know, just think about some of the things that I've just mentioned about uh, uh, characteristics to think about for going for keeping characters on offense or defense. So just a broad uh, set of guidelines that I've uh, put together. Um, hopefully you guys uh, find this useful. There's just one other thing that I'd like to uh, mention before I end the video. Now, one main reason that I'm really looking forward to this Grand Arena Championship is... Uh, uh, one particular feat. Now, I typically don't pay attention to titles and feats and all of that stuff, but there's one particular feat that they've uh, come up with, which I'm really excited about, and that's the Apex Predator feat uh, with the uh, with the Wampa in there. So that's probably going to come up in the third or fourth week, judging by the timelines. But really looking forward to this. So I'll have something special in place when uh, I become eligible for this feat. Um, really looking forward to using Wampa on offense to uh, to get this. And uh, once I get this, this is probably going to be my title and portrait for uh, for a while to come because it's uh, it's something I've been looking forward to. So really looking forward to that. So that's uh, that's it for uh, for this video. Just wanted to give you a brief idea or give you my thoughts on three v three. Obviously, there's uh, you know there's lots to think about, especially when it comes to taking down meta teams like Gas, Dr, and 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 uh, Galactic Legends, especially uh, Ray, for example, in a three v three setting. So I'll have some thoughts on that. Uh, as I go in into my Grand Arena matches and start facing uh, my uh, my opponents, so I'll I'll definitely have some um, some thoughts on uh, on what I can do to to take those out. Uh, just to give you a brief update, I did get my Ray uh, unlocked and managed to get her uh, fully Zetard and R7. So I'm I'm looking forward to keeping her on defense, um, and uh, so that means that I'll be forced to come up with ways to take out my opponent's Ray. Um, if and when I do face it on uh, on offense, so um, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully, um, in um, in the in the first few matches, we might get to face some, and we might come up with a strategy to to take it down. So, 
Um, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will uh, catch you guys in um, in a few days when our Grand Arena starts and we start uh, we start with our 3v3. Take care and I'll catch you guys later. Stay safe.